How's it going everybody? Friday night in the shop. It's been a long, rainy, cold week. Look, you can see my breath again. Um, it's been hovering around 27, 28, 29, 30 degrees Celsius. I don't know if that is in Fahrenheit, 80s, 90s. Today, it's cold. Like, it's like 5 or 6 degrees right now. I had to put the old Kenora dinner jacket back on. It's cold in here. I could almost make a fire. It's so cold. Anyhow, friends, I am fired up. Huge milestone in my daughter's life today. Uh, she crawled across the living room floor for the first time today. Um, she's had the movement down and she's rolling, but little Charlie, she decided today was the day and she crawled and pretty proud papa, I gotta say. <laughs> you guys out there with kids know. Um, it's pretty special when they hit those milestones and uh, my wife and I were just like, wow. They grow up so fast. And I know she's young. She's eight and a half months now, but that eight and a half months has flown by, friends. And uh, what a blessing to have a child. And I, I just, I look forward to the years coming, watching her grow and, and develop into, uh, a, you know, a young adult and an adult. Uh, it's been a special time in, in my household and my family. Anyhow, friends, I'm getting... Or I've gotten, getting, can you tell it's late at night on a Friday? <laughs> I've gotten so many emails about this subject. Um, I thought, you know what, it's time to do a video on it. You guys give me a lot of good ideas. Keep sending those questions of the day. Uh, keep sending those videos of your chainsaws. Guys, I love seeing your saws running. Um, the, the words of encouragement and, you know, you know, just... Getting to see what you guys are doing out there in your world. It's not just all about what I'm doing. It, it, it It's really enjoyable to see the saws that you guys have built from scratch or, you know, an old junker or maybe it was your dad's saw or, or just a, a saw that you've had for a while that you tuned up or you ported. It's pretty neat. Uh, thank you to everybody who takes the time uh, to email and, and share what you're doing in your world. And, of course, those of you that take the time to send a question of the day, I have had this question of the day so many times, and it is, I have a strip thread in my chainsaw. What do I do? Is there a way I can fix it? Should I drill it out one size bigger and tap it? Or is there another way to fix it? Well, friends, a lot of saws, you get a, a, an old case. I'm just going to grab this off the shelf. You know... Maybe you have a maybe you have a chainsaw case and it's super common on Husqvarna's. You'll have stripped holes where the top cover bolts down, or maybe you'll even have a stripped thread where the cylinder bolts down, etc. etc. Now, what do you do if that happens? Do you junk the saw? Do you tap it to the next size? Well, uh, sometimes I will tap them to the next size depending on what I'm doing or how oval the hole is um my 365 that i've been running for years one of the dog holes on that was really bad i had to drill it and tap it it's good now but again friends there are better ways to fix threads and i'm going to show you one today on the channel good wrenching and good repair techniques are the foundation of building saws or working on anything whether it be that old clackety clack uh, tiller i was running in the last video Thank you to those that hung out and, and watched that video. That was fun to make. Friends, sometimes, a lot of times, I'm doing other things other than working on chainsaws. Chainsaws are just a portion of my life. I'm going to throw more videos like that up on the channel. Because um, some days, that's what I'm doing. And I think sharing what I'm doing um, could be fun, too. I, I enjoy making videos like that. So thank you to everybody that checked out that. And uh, I'm going to have to till that guard a couple more times. I got a couple of comments about, you know, that you shouldn't till. I guess if you have loose soil, um, I watch videos all the time, you know, um, advertisements for backhoes and stuff. They're always digging in the sandiest soil and it's just like, you know, here friends, you can barely dig a hole with a shovel. The ground here is hard. You have to till here. If you don't till... Uh, your roots get root bound and you'll have very poor growth on your crops. Um, you got to till here. Um, and I know there are good reasons not to till, but here we definitely got to till. 
the soil here is very rich it, it grows just about anything really well um the only thing that we can't grow here or it's hard to grow things like peppers and that uh, peppers need a high soil temperature like hot peppers you got to get them in early and hopefully you have a late fall or we just don't have a long enough growing season here but anyhow friends I grabbed a random scrap cylinder. Uh, this is a cylinder I ruined quite a while ago. And uh, let's wreck a thread and then let's fix a thread. I'll show you guys how to do it. And, uh, you know, maybe this will help some of you out in your journey. I'll show you how I do it and and just uh, a general who's who of how to repair a thread and make it strong and last. Because let's face it, a lot of these saws we're working on, they're old and they got stripped threads. It's super common. I'm going to show you guys how to fix it. I'll bring you guys in close and let's do this. Okay, friends, we have this cylinder here. I don't know if you guys can see that. I'll zoom you right in. Here, look at that. The cylinder, the threads are just trashed in it. It's missing most of them. Okay. You put it in there and look, it's just rattly and wobbly. This thread's no good anymore. Now, you could put a new cylinder on it for sure. But let's face it, friends, money don't grow on trees. If you're not running your saws professionally, you're not feeding your family with your saws, even if you are, maybe. Maybe maybe times are tough. Okay, friends, this thread's no good, okay? It's stripped. Maybe you can fix it and get another year or two out of it. Well, let's find out, okay? Okay, so we take that cylinder there. And I know what size this is. This is an M6 by one. Now, what you do is buy one of these thread insert kits. They're super common. You can buy them online. You can buy them at an auto parts store. Okay, M6 by one. Get a little bag of inserts. You get a tap right here. Okay, here's your tap and here's your drill bit. You grab your inserts. One of these, there's a, there's a punch, okay, and then the install tool right here, okay? I'll put this away. Now, friends, if you're going to work on a lot of saws, save your money and, and buy these kinds of things because then you have them, right? I mean, then you have them. You can always buy more of these thread inserts. They're super common, super available. You can pick them up at different places. And that way, whatever you run into, you can fix it, right? Okay, so first things first. Okay, first things first. Remove your damaged threads, okay? Now, I'm doing this super carefully. And again, friends, I'm doing this with the camera in between me and it, so I gotta be real careful, okay? There you guys go. Drill the hole out and remove your threads. So there's your first step. Okay, next step, grab your top holder. Okay, tap your hole. I like this kit. The drill's really sharp. The tops are sharp. And again, give her a quarter turn to break the chip back. Okay. And again, I'm going to show you guys this shot for shot. I learned this stuff from old timers. They, I used to work in shops in high school. I pulled wrenches and then eventually got into the trades, but, um, you know, I learned a lot of this stuff from old timers. They taught me things. Because back in the day, you fixed things. A mechanic repaired things. Where in the modern era, you throw it away and you put a new part on, right? So, sometimes, you know, people say, Tin Man, you're kind of kind of old school. You could just get rid of that. Throw it in the garbage, you get a new one. Yeah, you totally could, guys. And if, if you know, if you have more time and less money, fix things. If you have more money and less time... Well, to me, I still say fix things, but 
You guys understand what I'm saying. It's just all what works for you. I'll never tell anybody that my way is the only way. Just a fella in my shop, puttering, making videos, having a good time. And, uh, I think we've, uh, I think we've had a lot of fun on this channel over the last how many years? Okay, now, I don't have to tap this as deep as I'm going, but I'm just better safe than sorry. Okay, unthread your top. Drop it on the floor. You guys know me. Okay, there you go. We got nice. I got a nice set of threads there. Okay, now grab your thread insert. Okay, your insert tool. This. Okay, and it indexes into the tool. Just like that. Now grab your grab your newly topped hole. Start threading this in. Now, a one up from this, friends, is if you want, put some Loctite. Okay, now, friends, the thing about these, they only thread in, they will not thread out, okay? So it might seem like, well, that's just going to sit in there. Friends, these will not back out. Once you put your screw in there, your bolt, it will never come out. Okay, it's really hard. I mean, of course, anything can break. These only go in, they don't go out. That's what I love about them. Okay, then take this. It's a little punch, basically. This is to remove your tang, okay? There you go. I just busted the tang out of there. Now look at that, that looks like factory. Okay, and now look, what do we have here? We have a perfect thread that we can screw this into. And look, I'll reef this down. I will try and remove this from the cylinder. Hey friends, look. I can't even strip that if I want to. Okay, so. I hope. I hope that showed you guys a thing or two. And again, since we're having fun here. Here, let's do the other side. Let's do one more. Okay, drill your hole, grab your top. It is just that simple. You know, strip threads can be a real pain. You strip a thread in a saw and it's like, oh, we've all done it. Who, who among us has not stripped a thread? I have. It doesn't happen often, but once in a while, you got a thread that's kind of questionable and uh, you're torquing something down and bang, there goes the last little bit of thread in there. You can't just leave it like that, right? You can't. I, I can't. That would bother me. So, with a kit like this, you literally can fix it in as quick as it takes to drill it out. Tap it. Okay. Grab your thread insert. And again, you can buy these inserts. They're super available online or at some auto parts stores. Keep them. Again, put our tool in there. These are often what they call a Healy coil. Okay, thread it in there. Pull that out. Take the top. Look at that. Just that easy, friends. So again, buy the proper tools and uh, you can literally fix anything. I still got that John's Red uh, 925 sitting on the shelf. 
that's what's actually wrong with that saw is the threads are pulled out of the exhaust port and uh, the fellow that sent that to me mentioned it. Well, I hope that helps some of you guys out. A lot of you wrench pullers out there have done this, used them. The uh, This style of thread repair has been around forever. Uh, often you'll hear them referred to as Healy coils. Uh, Quick certs, I think is another name brand. Uh, they're all pretty much the same. They all work good. Just make sure you drill your hole straight. Really the limitation, you know, on this saw, if you had to re-drill uh, the intake, and I have broken intake bolts in these, and let me tell you, it's like, but again, if you if you have a thread issue in here, you can drill it out. But the problem with these, you can't get the drill in. So, um, you know, I showed you guys basically just a mock-up for ease of explanation, but your only limitation with these is can you drill and tap whatever hole you want to get at without taking the saw apart? Um, most times you can, but, uh, and friends, if you don't want to buy the whole kit like this, and again, it doesn't matter what kit you buy. I've had expensive ones, cheap ones. It doesn't really matter. They all seem to work fine. Um, you can buy these by size. And again, if, if you run out of a size of insert, you can easily order them online. They're available all over the place. And again, once you have this, you're not going out to strip threads, or at least I'm not. But if you do have a saw that needs a thread repair, you can literally do it in five minutes and save yourself a whole bunch of headache. Um, and it's nice because it's just it's all in one nice kit. You got all your sizes in there and you're ready to rock and roll. Um, these are available in SAE and metric. I have both. And uh, super, super handy. Okay, I think that's about as far as we're going to go with this. Uh, I've been doing lots of little projects lately. Um, I think I'll make a video of kind of updating you guys on where I'm at. Lots of yard work and lots of small projects here. And again, friends, uh, I'm trying to uh, put together my shop build. and been focusing on that lately, uh, wrangling guys. I know a lot of trades guys just because I've been in construction, uh, residential construction for my whole adult life and this trying to figure out who's available. And basically for me, friends, when uh, my roofer, he's a buddy of mine I grew up with, he's an awesome guy, I hire him. He's my guy. Whenever he can fit that roof in is when it's going to get done. And same thing with the concrete. Uh, if it's done in fall, it's done in fall. That's just the way the cookie crumbles. And uh, so I'm trying to put all that together, but I'm really excited to get that happening. And uh, I got I got big plans that I've been working on for about 10 years for that shop. So I'm really excited about that. And uh, just excited in general. It's, it's springtime, getting into summer. It's been super hot here. And I just love every second of summer. I'm one of those people I need to be in sunlight. Uh, it's a thing for me. Anyhow. Question of the day today, Michael Williamson. Uh, Michael sent me an email and reset one, and I actually saw it today. Thank you for waiting a bit, Michael, and resending it. Friends, sometimes I just I don't get to the emails, but if you sent an email and you haven't seen a response in a week or two, uh, if you have the time, resend me another one or just bump it, you know, just email me bump or whatever, and uh, that'll bring it to the top of the pile, and, and often I'll, I'll see it then and send you guys a response. Um, I'm in there every day, friends, steady. Uh, when I meet and lunch at work, that's generally I'll go in and go through some emails, and first thing in the morning, if I have time, uh, when I get up, I'll rattle through a bunch of emails, and that's, that's how I make it fit into my schedule. Um, anyways, Michael Williamson, has a 1985 Husqvarna 266 XP. Love those saws. You guys know me. I'd like to get a couple more of them. I'm not going to lie. I actually have one on the shelf that I've had for a while that I want to run through. But we're on to 372s right now. Michael needs a chain break. And he wants to know which one will fit on his saw. Well, that's actually pretty easy. They will all fit, Michael. Um... Starting with your 66, 61, 266, 268, 272. Those are all the same chassis. Any chain brake will fit. Um, the early style, like 
late 70s up to about 83, 84, sometimes 85 is the metal chain break. Do I have one here? No, I don't have one hanging up, friends. Like this, Michael. Okay, there's your metal chain break. Okay, this is correct. This is a 1980, this is a 1983 266. This is an SE. This would, this chain break would fit on your saw. Now, where it gets technical, but not really, it's actually pretty simple. A lot of the saws have had uh, a top end change and a lot of guys, including me, will put a 272 top end on. The way to tell if you have a 272 top end, do you have a decomp on the right side? Now, if you do, that metal chain break will hit on the decomp. So, if you do have a decomp, put a decomp plug in and you can run the old style chain break or the one with the plastic flag, which is a 272 chain break. And so they'll all fit on your saw. It just depends on what mixing and matching you want to do. Uh, they all work. Now, I will say something, Michael. If you're inclined to buy one of the uh, no-name, unbranded aftermarket ones, I years ago, I ordered, I think I ordered three of them for the channel. I was going to test them. I couldn't even get one of them to work properly. Uh, the They were just horrible quality. I don't know if they've gotten better or if anybody's making a good one. Friends, if you know of a good aftermarket 272 chain break um if one of the companies is making one maybe if you could post a comment below um but i've had nothing but horrible luck with uh the 272 aftermarket chain breaks so you probably want to stick with oem michael anyhow thanks for sending your question of the day and thank you everybody for hanging out here i i appreciate everybody that hangs out on this channel and uh, some of you have been here forever. And uh, I see you guys in the comments. And uh, I read every comment or as many as I can on the, you know, when I drop a video, I go in there that night and read as many comments as I can get through. So thank you to everybody that takes the time to hang out here. I appreciate you. Thanks for watching. Take her easy. Later.